Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Stephanie Yen. In this video, I'm going to talk about the mistakes that I find in October. Why don't we get started by 30 to 20 key mistakes? So the first one is underestimate the cutting point. And here is the example. So in the actual game, um, black played attachment joseki here. And then white went to the corner without the hane exchange on the outside. This is one of the classic joseki we have um, talked about earlier in our joseki videos. But in the actual game, white didn't play the hane. Instead, white went to the corner directly. And then black hane here. And then white played a wedge. And black ataris, white connects. And then black played a double tiger's mouth here. And then all of the weakness of black shape here is all fixed, except that there is only one cutting point. But since the four stones here on the bottom are weak, uh, white cannot uh, Atari from, from here because black can extend and now white has two, weakness, uh, two weak groups. So in the actual game, white played Atari here and black connects. And then white play the larger extension. So usually the larger extension works if we play the joseki, the honey joseki here. Extend and a block, and then you can either play the large, larger extension on the third line or fourth line. Both moves work. But why in this situation, the larger extension doesn't work? And also that's a mistake. It's because the cutting point right here. So when we look at this situation, white has a four stones on the top. So white probably thinks this cutting point and is too close to the edge, so there's nothing to be worried. But since white lost one more liberty on the top, now the cutting point becomes very important and dangerous for white. All right, so let's look at this Joseki first. If white has one air, one liberty on the top, when black cuts here and white can just simply push the two black stones to the edge, and now we can see white has a three liberties, but black only has a two. So white is going to win the capture race. But when we don't have the liberty on the top or on the side over here, which is the actual game, and then after black cuts here, if white still used the same method to attack the two black stones, now we can see after black goes here, black has three liberties, but white only has a two. So in that case, black is going to win the capture race. So the liberty on the side is very important. If we don't have the, the liberty, on the top over here, then the larger extension move doesn't work in this situation. So then black should, uh, white should just play the smaller extension. And now you don't have to worry about the cutting point here because the latter always work for white. Okay, so that's the first one. Now let's look at the second one. The next mistake is the wrong shoulder hit to attack. And here is the example. So in the actual game, white played a splitting move here to try to invade black's moil on the bottom. And uh, in the actual game, black played the shoulder hit to attack this black or white stones, which is the mistake. But why? So when you see the shoulder hit, you have to either extend on the top or extend on the bottom. So in this situation, of course, white is going to extend on the bottom so that a white will get more eye space. And this is the actual game. So after this two exchange move here, now you can see white already have a six spaces on, on the bottom. And when you have a rectangular six, that's already a life shape. So even though black is able to enclose on the top, but now when white slide on the bottom, the whole group is already alive. And now you can see all of the territory on the bottom is gone. So in this situation, instead, instead of enclosing on the top, black should push 
weight to the center and destroy the eye space first. So the approach will be the correct move in this, in this situation. So after weight one space jump to the center, now you can cap on the top. So the method should be you just you take away you take away all the eye space first and then you cap on the top because also you have some centes on the on the left when you need it but you don't have to play it right now when you need it you can play some exchange here and try to enclose the two stones so probably you will have a question now when is the shoulder hit good now i'm going to use this corner to demonstrate when the shoulder hit is good So the best, the best example will be the one space pincer joseki. Black play the one space pincer joseki here. And if white doesn't want to take the corner or white doesn't like the double approach joseki since this is very complicated and white can just simply jump out and look for the enclosure, enclosure move next. So black needs to play either knight's move or one space jump here, either way. And now, um, since black, white has two stones in the, in the middle and black only has one stone on the left. So it would be too dangerous for white to play the counter pincer here because then white will have a two weak groups. So now the shoulder hit will be the best attacking method in this situation because you don't want to attack too much but also you want to give some pressure on your opponent group and then now you can play the shoulder hit and black extend and black extend and white extend push block and one split jump that's also one of the josekis we showed in our joseki videos if you have any questions you can go back to see the joseki video and then either black white can play the tiger's mouth or connect here or you can also tanuki so in that situation usually the shoulder hit uh works perfectly when you when your group is not that that strong and it, also you want to attack your opponent groups so that would be the perfect example to show you the shoulder hit is good but in this situation we just talked about black has so many stones on the outside and white only has one stone so in that case black should just attack the stone instead of giving some rooms on the bottom for white to live very easily Okay, so uh, these are the mistakes by 30 to 20 Q, uh, 20 Q players. Now let's move to 20 to 10 Q players. The first mistake by 19 to 10 Q player is the wrong approach move to a 5-5 five, five point corner. And here is the example. So probably when you're seeing when you see this opening, you will have a lot of questions about it because I have seen a lot of people online on either KGS or OGS play the 5-5 five, five point opening. And then it's very easy to make mistakes to approach this corner. And I picked one of my students' game online. And now I'm going to teach you why the 5-5 five, five point in a corner is bad. So usually we have uh, eight options to take the empty corner. You can go to the start point, through three point, and three four point and three five point or four five point but not the five five point that would be too high so in this video i'm going to teach you how to make the five five point bad okay so in the actual game black made mistake because black played a start point and she thinks my student think this is start point there's no nothing wrong with taking the start point but after this move it's white's turn and white can just simply block and simply block and now you can see the two black stones are too close to the to the three white stones on the outside and the liberties are very tight as well so black actually has a better way to approach the corner which is just simply take the three three points so now after you take the three three point it's a little bit further from the five five point and you won't see this happen to give white strong wall on the outside so the only way for white to attack this black stone is either block 
from the right or a block from the bottom. But black can just simply jump out. And now you can see the corner is very solid and it has a lot of territory actually. It has a, at least 10 points. But now you can see the two white stone on the, on the, on the outside. It's not a strong wall yet. And also white needs to use actual move to extend on the side. But now you can see it was a white corner, but after these two exchange move here, the corner becomes to black's corner and plus black took the corner in center. So when you, in your games, in your future games, in your coming games, if you see your opponent play the five, five point, you just simply take the three, three point and then live in the corner in center. That's very easy. The easiest way to approach the five, five point. Okay. So now let's move to the next question. Next mistake. The next mistake by 19 to 10 Q player is the diagonal approach is bad. All right, here is the example. So in the actual game, white played a splitting move here to try to split uh, the site here. And usually when you have enough space to take two space extension, like this, or this, and then the splitting move is good. So that's the actual game. Um, black approach from the bottom and then white played a diagonal approach. I will call, it doesn't actually have a name for this move, but I like to call it diagonal approach because usually the approach move is here, right? but this is one space closer to black's corner. So why is this a bad move? Because when we play the, the approach move here, not only we are closer to our stones each other and uh, we don't worry about we don't need to worry about the the, uh, pro, uh, the invasion move here right now because the black corner is still not strong yet but also when you play an approach move you are giving pressure on the stone but this move that's too much that's overplay because of course black is going to block here and now you, you, you can see this stone is kind of like hitting on the wall. Like only one stone here, but black has two stones, two, two stones on the top. And then there's no way for white to connect back since this is a large extension. If black, if white played this move here, like the approach, and now you can see uh, this move is unnecessary. So if you just simply approach, if black goes here, you can, just play the double knight, knight move here to connect and protect your shape here. And if we don't play this move, let's say if we keep extending and this will be very bad shape for white because on um, this move is called Hane on the head of two. And we always try to avoid this shape is because the two, two stones liberty is very tight. And also there's no good responding move for the honey here. If white uh, uh, honey is here, then um, black can keep honey or the cutting point will work immediately. So in the actual game, when white goes here and black blocks in the corner and white descent down because black, white probably think this stone is too weak and then I need to protect it. But eventually, since this extension is too far and the corner is okay for now, and then black invaded. And now white has to deal with two weak groups at the same time. So when you try to approach a start point, even though it's a, the three, four point, the diagonal approach is not a very good move because it looks fine as a, and when you approach here, but after your opponent block here, now you would realize this stone is very weak. So do not play a diagonal approach. Instead, we should always approach one space further. All right, so these are the mistakes by 19 to 10 Q players. So now let's move to nine to one Q players. The first mistake by 9 to 1 Q player is the wrong response to a kicking move. And here is the example. 
So this is the actual game and I want to show you how it happened like this. Okay. So white approached, that's normal, and black played a one space pincer and white played a one space jump out because white doesn't want to give um, black too much uh, potential or influence on the outside. And mm, white played a one space jump and black played a pincer move here. Uh, so usually this is uh, the, the Joseki, but in this situation, this move would work because um, if black played an enclosed move here, and since white has a perfect shoulder hit to enclose this, the stone, plus white can connect the stone on the, on the right side, and black doesn't want, that, doesn't want to see that happen, so black chose to uh, attack this white stone first. And then white enclosed the corner for sure, because black is missing one stone here. And in the actual game, black played a kicking move here. And I see a lot of people make mistake to respond a kicking move. People respond a bump, on uh, connect, and honey, which is the your uh, the actual game, and squeeze on the top. These are all the wrong response to the kicking move. So where is the correct move then? Just simply descend because now black uh, white is attacking black's corner. So you, as white, you don't want to give any help to black to live or make more ice space in the corner. So if we squeeze here, black connects and black still have a uh, connecting move underneath. So white still need to play actual move to disconnect. But now you can see this exchange move is actually helping black. And Hane in the actual game, that's also a helping move. Atari's and then white connects back. And now you can see these two exchange moves are also helping black. So when, when you see the kicking move, you really, if you don't have the stone here, uh, you really you should just extend up because extending down will, will help black enclose your, or push you on the, on the bottom. So that's not very good for white. But if you have the stone, one space jump on the top, and you can just simply descend and disconnect the two, two groups like this. Okay, so that's the first mistake. So now let's move to the second mistake. The next mistake is in an impulsive move. Here is the example. So in the actual game, black played, black is looking for more ice space on the top and black played a honey and white blocks, that's normal, and black descent here. Okay, so first of all, descending here is not a very good move because uh, there's uh, some weakness here. Like for example, if white peeps here, black connects, and white now is able to connect the two stones with the group on the left because there's a Atari move here. So in the actual game, in the actual game, white played an impulsive move here and helped black to fix the weakness. Now the whole group is already alive. So first of all, black should connect. And in the actual game, black first uh, mistake first, and then white just, I, I think probably white didn't think uh, for a long time for that move because Black, uh, white is worried about the push here and um, probably white is worried about the territory in the corner. And white just blocked here without thinking. And this blocking on the first line, I see a lot of people descending. So this is the first mistake you, you should remember. Do not descend if you have enough eye space, just simply connect because when you descend, there's, there's a peep, right? And uh, after, after this exchange, and since white has one more stone here, white now can, can do something, destroy your eye space. So if you have enough eye space, then you can just simply connect. But in some situations like this, and 
when you don't have enough ice space now you only have a white only has a six spaces here and you need to increase or expand your ice space then the descending will be good but not in this situation because black already have so many eye space that large very big eye space inside it has around 10 so there's no point to descend and also this move is not good for the end game as well because when you connect here and later on you can honey and connect back Right? So now white only has a four points in the corner. But if we descend after white make this exchange, white has six points. So descending is not a good move. Remember that. And uh, this is the second mistake for white. White just simply blocked without thinking because there, there are some weakness over here in the actual game. And block white probably didn't think about that and just just simply block all right so I have I haven't received a lot of questions on about how can we get stronger so my answer is very easy and simple so keep practicing some left and death problems if you can do it every day that would be perfect and plus get rid of your impulsive moves like this always take a few seconds to think is this move good or do I have a better move? Always pause like three to five seconds to think, even though it's a necessary move, but still let's try to pause three to five seconds before you move. Okay, so these are for the nine to one Q players. And now let's move to one to four done players. The first mistake by one to four down player is invading on the fourth line. Here is the example. So now it's white's turn. And in an actual game, white invaded here on the fourth line. Why is this a bad move? Why is this a mistake? Okay. So usually when you try to invade your opponent's territory, you always leave two options for yourself after the invasion move. So invading on the third line in this situation would be better than the fourth line move here. Because when you invade here, you always want to find enough eye space to live inside, in your, inside of your opponent territory. That would be better than escaping to the outside. So in this situation, if you can make the extension move inside of Black's territory like this, and you will have enough eye space to live. So that means if white uh, invaded here, black will force black to take the pincer here, to play the pincer here. And now you can jump out. And in this situation, it will be much better than invading here on the fourth line directly because black now doesn't need to use actual move to prevent your make eye space on the bottom. Instead, black can just simply play some sentence here and then try to enclose this stone. So I'm not saying uh, invading on the fourth line is always bad, but in this situation, since you have enough eye space on the bottom, and also you have enough space to escape to the center, and the third line invasion move will be better. All right, so now let's move to the next mistake. The last mistake is killing a necessary stone. And here is the example. So I want to analyze the, the board first so that you can understand better why the next move is the mistake. So black, white has the huge territory on the top and some territory on the left and a few points on the right. But for black, we only, we only can see some small territory on the right and on the left. So there's no big territory to compete against white territory on the top. So the only way to win this game for black is to kill the three stones, try to kill the three stones. So in the actual game, black played troves to attack from the bottom, which is a mistake, but why? Because I wanna show you uh, the actual game first. So after black killed the stone, 
Black only increases some points by killing this only one stone here. But after this exchange move, and white already have some eye space over here, some eye space on the bottom. So the correct way to attack the three stones is to enclose on the top. Because black has two strong groups on both sides, and after black caps here, there's nowhere for white to escape to the center. So then that will be that would be easier to, for black to kill the three stones. And also the two white stones are on the fourth line. It's harder for, for white to make some eye space when, when the bottom is still open. So killing this unnecessary stone eventually make black like this. So killing this unnecessary stone eventually make black lose this game. So this is the losing game for this game. Uh, losing move for this game. Um, so these are the mistakes in October. So if you like the video, please give me a thumb up and subscribe below and leave some comments. If you have any more questions, you can go to our website and follow us on Twitter and Facebook page. My name is Stephanie Yin. I will see you next time.